قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhin astafa amma ba'd We are very close to elections. What is our responsibility as citizens of this beautiful country, we do see sometimes some people in general and also sometimes Muslims eye elections suspiciously as something alien and foreign imported to us from the West. Others dismiss them as something being held for Appearances only, just window dressing, without any substance behind them. These notions might cause some people not to encourage the elections and forget about their participating in them. Due to these reasons that some people find that modern day democracy the elections in the manner that they are cast, in the manner that they are run, is something alien from religion. And as a result, it may encourage some people to forget about the responsibility that they have in participating in these elections. And I felt that we let's talk about our responsibility as Muslims. It seems to me that people or those that discourage are seriously mistaken. Elections are in today the main avenue for our realizing the principles of consultation that Allah has enjoined upon us when he said and their affairs are determined by consultation among themselves. وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ And it is also a way of establishing the advices and the injunctions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordained in the verses that we had spoken of in our previous discussion. However, coming back to our discussion today, Allah says in the Quran, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ And their affairs are determined by consultation among themselves. Surah Ashura, ayah number 38. This verse, in general, and applies to all people. It applies to the ruler along with the masses, as well as to the members of the population among themselves. And even to our private lives between husband and wife in their domestic affairs. Allah says, And if they, the parents, both desire weaning through mutual consent and consultation between them, there is no blame upon either of them. This is in Surah Baqarah. Serving people and fulfilling their daily needs 
is one of the most emphatic obligation in Islamic law. Serving people, fulfilling the daily needs of people, is one of the most emphatic obligations in Islamic law. Indeed, even caring for the needs of animals and maintaining their pathways is recognized as a collective obligation and an act of devotion. This is the beauty of Islam. Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalif, said once, I swear by Allah, if a sheep were to stumble in Iraq, I could expect Allah to call me to account for it on the day of judgment. Ask him, why did you not make the roads suitable for it, O oh, Umar? Subhanallah. Umar, the Khalifa, the second Khalifa of Islam, says that if a sheep were to be injured in a road in Iraq, and Umar sitting in Mac in Medina does not care for the requirements of the sheep in Iraq, and as a result of my negligence, not providing the correct facility, which results in the injuring of animals, I, as Umar the Khalif, will be questioned on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of reckoning, on the day of judgment. Why did you not make the, rules, the roads suitable for it, O Umar? How much more important is serving the needs of the populace and keeping their neighborhood safe and clean? When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about good works, a'malu saliha, he said, do not show disregard, do not belittle any good deed, even if you but give someone a stretch or rope or the thong of a sandal, or pour out some water from a pitcher to give someone to drink, or remove some harmful impediments from the road. These are good deeds which Islam encourages. These words of the Prophet ﷺ show us the importance of our individual, the importance of our voluntary efforts, at meeting the needs of others. From this, we should be able to grasp how much more important general services are. Services that Islamic law makes incumbent upon society to carry out, like road maintenance, street lighting, supplying basic necessities to society, like electricity, water communications, water, communications, public transport to prevent urban congestion. We can also add to this the maintenance of parklands, recreation facilities, public grounds. Then we have the supervision of markets, enforcing quality standards in the consumer goods that are offered for sale. These are but some of the duties that fall under the authority and jurisdiction of the municipal government and ultimately of the government in ruling, which either carries out these duties itself or in conjunction with other agencies. The corpus of Islamic law and the obligations that it set forth are studied collectively by people who consult one another about these things. And these rulings are also carried out collectively. The opinion arrived at collectively is better than the opinion arrived at by a single individual. For instance, scholars of hadith reject a strange or any narration of a hadith that runs contrary to way of majority of narrators that quote the hadith, even if the narration is conveyed to us by someone who is reliable and trustworthy. The most important qualities of a candidate to have are 
what we will discuss, inshallah, after our break. What we do learn up till now is that the elections and casting the vote is by means of giving your opinion about how or who is most fitting to fulfill the needs of society. And therefore, it becomes our religious responsibility to participate in these elections and it does not or is not against the grain of Islamic justice. However, when casting your vote, there are things that we should keep in mind. The quality of the candidates, their political manifesto, to what extent they are going to be able to fulfill that which they promise. And that should be the decisive factor as to whom you cast your vote for. However, Islam and the deen of ours in the current situation, especially in this country of ours, this beautiful country of ours, Muslims are encouraged to be active participants and take active participation in our elections and also further to contribute positively in various government agencies in order to establish justice, kindness, and prevent that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented in the ayah, in Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal bagh ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Stay tuned till we get back inshallah. طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Before the break we spoke of, of the importance as a Muslim and as a general citizen of this country to be an active participant in the general elections to take this opportunity of casting your vote. However, what are the qualities for a candidate to have? As ordinary citizens, we need to be casting our vote. But as people who are going to be candidates, what are the important qualities that candidates should have? Firstly, a candidate must be sincere because love for others, a candidate stands up for election with this promise of serving humanity. And he must be sincere because love for others is a form of worship if you're a Muslim. And the candidate seeks appointment to a post where he will really have to put this into practice. He must love for his brother what he loves for himself. He must be a person of ethics and good moral conduct. He will have to be positively involved in many programs and the activities that are vitally important to the public welfare. The dictates of loyalty to his country and to its people require him to work to serve the general welfare and not his personal interests or not the interests of his ethnic group, or not the interests of his ideology, personal ideology, or not the interests of his religion only. However, he needs to work for the broader interests of the populace. The candidate who is elected needs to speak in the spirit of those with him in the municipality and not in a high-handed individualistic tone. Candidate who is elected needs to speak in the spirit of humanity, in the spirit of solidarity, in the spirit of helping the country and not in a high-handed individualistic tone. And this brings the aspect of shura, consultation. It is hope that these elections and those elected councils will provide ta tangible proof to the general populace 
as South Africans, we should and we will hasten to engage local citizenry in our activities. We should participate in establishing community centers that provide cultural, social, really recreational activities as well as citizen councils through which the general public can share in policy and various other decision making. The elections is an agency through which we can do so. It is critical that people of the country, especially our younger generation, become involved in these elections and get involved in our municipal councils, either as candidates or as voters. We cannot remain ambivalent or negative in our attitudes. Therefore, it is upon every citizen to be registered and then get to know who the candidates are and then choose those whom he believes are the best for the job. We are optimistic about this attempt and what will follow of broader interest in the future that will be of equal or greater importance for our country. We wish to thank everyone who is making a contribution to these elections and is encouraging people to participate in them. May Allah help his servants as long as they are engaged in helping each other. We have political roadshows on the beat. South Africans of all persuasions are bracing themselves for a hive of lively roadshows after the various political parties have launched their election manifestos recently. An election manifesto is a public declaration of the action plan, of policies and priorities that a party aspires for it is voted into power. These are polity, policies and priorities and principles that a party aspires for it is voted into power. People do not just vote for issues that are in the party, political manifestos, but for personalities as well, which means that the manifesto has to be supported by individuals of integrity. What are the credentials of a reputable leader? And how does leadership engage with the electorate once it comes into power? Honesty and justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O Dawood, verily we have placed you as a successor, as a khalifa on earth. So judge between men with truth and justice. Chapter 38, ayah number 26. The Quran refers to the leadership role of the prophet Dawood by highlighting the most important credentials of a leader an undying commitment to honesty and justice. It is the religious obligation of a leader. It is his ethical and moral obligation of a leader to govern on the basis of justice, irrespective of color, cult, class, gender, or creed. Transparency and accountability is another important ingredient for a leader. The inaugural speech of the first Khalif of the Islamic Empire, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, serves as the benchmark for people in leadership positions. When Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was nominated as the Khalif after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addressed his people thus, people, I have been put in authority over you and I'm not the best of you. So if I do the right thing, then help me. And if I do wrong, then put me straight. Truthfulness is a sacred trust and lying is a betrayal. The weak among you is strong in my sight. I will surely try to remove his pain and suffering. And the strong among you is deemed weak by me until I take from them what is rightfully someone else's. Inshallah, when obscene things spread among any nation, 
calamities generally continued to descend upon them. As long as I obey Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should obey me. And if I do not obey Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then obedience to me is not incumbent upon you. The short but very profound address has innumerable lessons for us. A brief analysis of the speech reveals the following salient indicators. People, I have been put in authority over you and I'm not the best of you. This is a clear declaration that you do not assume power because of any inherent superiority over others, nor are you treated differently in the eyes of the law because of the political seat that you occupy. The hallmark of a good leader is that he is unassuming, humble, and is evidenced from the statement of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he says, I'm not the best of you. He also said, if I do well, then help me, and if I act wrongly, then correct me. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu affirms the obligation of citizens to support him in doing the right, as well as their right to hold him accountable and to demand correction if he does wrong. Citizens cannot afford to remain docile in the face of wrongdoing and corruption and simply entrust the business of governance to those vested with power. Another salient feature of the speech was truthfulness is a sacred trust and lying is tantamount to treachery. Truthfulness is far more than having an honest tongue in Islam. Truthfulness is the conformity of the outer with the inner. The action with the intention, the speech with belief, and the practice with preaching. Truthfulness is the very cornerstone of an upright Muslim character. And it should be the cornerstone of every leader's character and the springboard for his virtuous deeds. The Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, I order you to be truthful for indeed truthfulness leads to righteousness and indeed righteousness leads to paradise. A man continues to be truthful and strives for truthfulness until he is written as a truthful person with Allah. And beware of falsehood for indeed falsehood leads to sinning and indeed sinning leads to the fire. A man continue to tell lies and strive upon falsehood until he is written as a liar. Abu Bakr also said, The weak among you is deemed strong by me until I return to them that which is rightfully theirs. And the strong among you is deemed weak by me until I take from them what is rightfully someone else. Justice is the cornerstone of good governance. The weak shall not be overlooked because of their helpless and vulnerable social and economic position nor shall leadership ingratiate itself to the strong because of their power and influence. The Quran warns us against the notion of self-justice. O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah, even though it be against yourselves. These are some of the salient features that Abu Bakr has said. Together with that, finally, obey me as long as I obey Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then I have no right to your obedience. Obedience to the leader is contingent upon the leader following the source of legislation in Islam being the Quran and Sunnah. In our case, the Constitution. Patriotism is therefore not an unqualified commitment or loyalty to an individual or to a party. Loyalty should never be a simple matter of my party right or wrong. Such blind prejudice borders on bigotry and fanatism. There is also the aspect of corruption. We often complain about corruption in government. Beyond complaining what is our duty as citizens or as Muslims when dealing with fraud and corruption. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, help your brother when he is an oppressor or is being oppressed. It was asked, O Messenger of Allah, 
We help the one being oppressed. But how do we help an oppressor? He said, by seizing his hand. When we see a leader oppressing people, indulging in corruption, etc., we have a moral duty to speak and to demand corrective measures. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to take part in these elections in the manner that is deserving and may our candidates and people in government take the advice from the speech of Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala an. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون. Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded. قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري